Okay. There you go. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Sorry for the slight delay, uh, but you know, a session about sound would be very sad without sound. So let's hope it works. Uh, so this is project interwoven sound spaces, um, uh, as uh, was uh, previously mentioned, has to do with telematic performance and enhancing telematic performance through network technologies as well as through e-textiles. So. The project started uh, about March last year, April actually. That's where we got uh, most of, the, of our team together. And um, it ended in December with this performance at the local concert sound on the left side. And together with uh, the Studio Acoustic which is a beautiful concert hall. <laughs> Of North, North Bosnia, and we had two ensembles playing together uh, um, about 1,800 kilometers apart. And um, um, so, for this, we also had four composers working with us that wrote four pieces just for the project. And the uh, team here at the Berlin Open Lab, where the computing group worked on six wearables, six interactive rugs. And also we had set up two live streamings uh, that people could use to follow the performance, both from the perspective of the Berlin um, concert, as well as from the one in Piteo. So you could see how things looked on both sides. And um, so a quick timeline of uh, uh, the male milestones for what concerns our collaboration with the musicians. There were many sides to this project. We also developed hardware and software, but now I just have five minutes. So I'll focus more on the work we did with the musicians and composers. We had a workshop with all the four of them where we explained uh, you know, our vision for the project, the technologies that we had developed in terms of uh, interactive wearables that track the musicians' movement, how they could use them in their composition, how they could also uh, harness certain affordances of the network to design their composition uh, around the possibilities of like network music performance. We're going to give a quick example of that uh, in one of the next slides. And so in between the 17th and 19th of October, I traveled to Northern in Sweden, and we had the first network rehearsals that you see there in the picture. That's the MMD lab in, in the L2. Uh, and in the screens, there are the musicians from the uh, Nobotan Neon Ensemble in Sweden uh, rehearsing with the Ensemble Canon in Berlin. And that's uh, Anna Maria Rodriguez, one of the composers uh, showing the cellist uh, some ideas. And uh, so uh, we had different composition approaches. Um, uh, here, I'm going to give a quick example of how two of the composers decided to write for this uh, Nectar Music performance uh, environment that we came up with. One is Cathope. Um, Australian composer and scholar, and the other in Smaltigism, who is uh, actually here in Berlin, lives here and uh, works at the Academie der Künste. And they both were at the performance uh, in December introducing their pieces. So, um, uh, in the case of Smaltigism, he decided to work with uh, um, uh, the uh, data from the interactive rugs, as well as uh, one of the wearables that uh, Cody will present later, that was worn by the cellist, to work on sound synthesis that was then amplified through speakers that were placed inside the contrabass clarinets of the clarinetist put in Berlin and uh, in um, in Peter in Sweden, there were two contrabass clarinets in the two locations. And the interesting thing it did uh, that is kind of very peculiar of network performance that wouldn't have worked in a kind of, let's call it traditional uh, um, situation, is that he also made one of the clarinets uh, sound within the other clarinet and back. So he created this sort of feedback loop of an instrument within the instrument using this like custom speakers that he has there. So here's a short excerpt. You can also check them there. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Let, let, let me, you know, let me get them into the, the whole. Where's my 
understand the client was receiving the sound of the remote clarinet inside the clarinet and adding its own sound, so creating this very dense drones that were like also amplified by some synthesized sound that were then resonating inside the instrument itself without being played back in the speakers. And so the, it was very interesting, like the kind of timbre textures that he could get by actually working with the affordances of the network itself. On the other hand, we had um, uh, Cat Hope uh, that instead didn't work with synthesis or networking audio, but she brought into the picture uh, her own um, interactive graphical scoring system, which actually used the data from the wearables to generate this live graphical score that uh, the musicians were uh, performing with. So. Uh, like the composition, the movie sounded very different from the one that uh, Marty Gleason uh, proposed. And this video here is instead from uh, the video live streaming. So we had the screens on the opposite side and the live musicians on the other side. In this case, there were the three of them, percussion, viola, and a clarinet. On the other side, there was right here the clarinetist from uh, uh, the KNM um, in Berlin. So now I'm going to go over to Cody uh, that will give a quick uh, overview of the um, uh, wearables that were developed here to build for the project. All right, so let's try this. Cody, you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Hello, hello. Yes. So uh, I've got your slides on and okay. the first one is on and I don't know if you can see them in Zoom, you should probably be able yes. to. Okay, yes, whenever you want. Okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna talk a bit about the overall concept and the garment design for um, the project. So the concept was based on the overarching idea of a complex network with its intertwining connections and the distortions created by interactions within it. Next slide. The network emerges in all parts of the musical performance, in the sound, the wearables, the stage, and the interactions between those. And interwoven sound spaces is about bringing these elements into a shared space. So just to quote part of the written concept, here, an action at any point in the network feeds back through the entire system, rippling across connections between points. The only way to discover how a connection will react is to touch it, to play it, to perform the action itself. Next slide. So during the course of the project, we developed two different types of wearables and one rug for the musicians and composers to use during their performances. Each type of wearable is developed for a specific kind of movement made by the musicians while they play their instruments. The tensile wearable was inspired by tensile structures typically seen in architecture applications. Mm -hmm. And these are based on stretching a material, often textile between points to provide structural integrity, often with minimal material. So in our case, I wanted to span the distance between moving points on the body and track these movements via differences in tension in the textile. And it was meant for the musicians with movement across their shoulder, elbow, and finger. Also, I don't really like to work with mannequins um, since they are a rather poor representation of real bodies in motion. So as a starting point, I'm thinking about the individual anatomy of the person and their particular movement rather than beginning with conventional flat patterns or garment constructions. But this was challenging because the musicians couldn't stand for a draping session. We only had limited access to them. So we improvised finding musicians among us to test the prototypes and also closely studying video recordings. Once we realized the material of the wearable would need to be custom designed and knitted for the project, I worked closely with Emma, the textile designer, to find a textile solution for creating a wearable that was both soft and elastic, but also durable and reliable as a sensor. The other type of wearable, the string wearable, um, was developed for the more static musicians. I was inspired by the idea of braiding the network or twists and braids as a representation of the network. And this was translated into a chunky braid in the string wearable. 
An integrated accelerometer tracks the movement in one of the strings as it bumps and swings in reaction to the musician's subtle weight shifting. And the result is a more poetic interpretation of the music, musicians interacting unconsciously with their wearable. I also enjoyed working with the composer Kat Hope on this one. Um, she used the string wearable in her composition for the performance, and she wanted to maximize the swing of the strings to draw out the sound or memory of the movement for a continuous drone-like effect. So to achieve this, we tested various placements of the strings and of the embedded accelerometer. Next slide. Uh, I couldn't see it, sorry. <laughs> okay, this is good. Um, the rug is meant to create a shared space on the stage between Sweden and Berlin, as well as keeping the musicians in one spot while their image was streamed live. It also offers potential for interaction between the musicians and the network through integrated sensors. They can activate like pedals. Um, the shapes are derived from a kind of analog motion tracking I did during a session with Cosima, the cello player. So you can see those on the right hand side. Um, as a result, the design and the shapes are a sort of collaboration between my drawings and her movements. So in hindsight, working with the musicians and composers in different geographic locations was exciting, but it also came with many challenges we had to tackle along the way, including re remote fittings and shipping garments and rugs back and forth for testing and alterations. And sometimes you're in a call and you just wish you could reach through the screen to adjust some minor detail or help with putting things in place. But instead, we had to come up with very precise instructions and Emma prepared kits for the wearables with a kind of manual explaining how things should be worn and connected. But in the end, it was also nice to give up control and see how the musicians and composers finally use the pieces in their creative practice. And that's all from my side. Thanks for listening and looking forward to your comments and questions. So yeah, thank you very much.